Our next logical question after finding out how this all works was, is it safe? Should we be eating genetically modified food? What do you think? What do you think the potential effects will be for humans? I think devastating after what you told me and what we already know. I don't think it's a good idea. Like you idea. said, obesity seems the like cancer is on the rise, autism. I mean, the, the possibility of becoming ill from them is very, very po possible, I think. It seems like there could be. I'm not exactly sure what kind, but yeah. I think there could be lots. I mean, there's already people who have issues, you know, like celiac disease and, you know, gluten. So, you know, with these artificial things, who knows what would happen. And, long-term, you know, infertility yeah. stuff and all of mm -hmm. that. Do you think that there could be any health effects to humans? I don't think so. Higher risk of cancer, possibly, because of cholesterol. Higher risk of uh, strokes is another one. Well, it's making, you know, us obese, number one. Right. You know, other people use cane sugar in other mm -hmm. countries, and we're using corn syrup yeah. because we produce it here, and right. we're basically yeah. putting money in the pockets of people who are killing us. So. Well, I think, you know, we're putting chemicals into our bodies that we don't know of from a lot of different sources and there can be a lot of health effects, um, which I think we're seeing more of right now. So. If there was salmon in a tomato, maybe I might get some better skin because <laughs> out of a tomato. Just <laughs> or just the salmon oil. In general, like, they, they, actually, they actually have these seeds that produce the pesticide already in the plant to save money so they don't have to spray it on the plants. Mm. They actually have it like that, a seed that produces it in itself. Wow. Which That's intense. Be... <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Yeah. That's a little out of the box. <laughs> I'm like, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you could do that. I don't right. even think about it most of the time. You just buy it. Right. Get it. <laughs> you would hope that it would be generally Yeah, safe. you just yeah. assume that the government oh. or FDA or whatever is just taking care of it. it. Right. Yeah. You hope. Yeah, you hope. <laughs> So we all seem to think that there are certain health effects to eating genetically modified foods. So where's the proof? Well, through our investigation, we found many countries all over the world who have done scientific studies, and as a result, have taken action by either labeling or banning American imported genetically modified foods. Wait a minute. We're eating it. They're banning it. What's going on here? Is there something everyone else in the world knows that we don't? Well, apparently quite a bit. There were too many studies to go over, so here's one of them. But to check out the other scientific studies, just go below the TV to the scientific studies section. So back to the study. Dr. Ermakova of the National Association of Genetic Security in Russia wanted to see what the effect of eating genetically modified foods would be on rats and their offspring. The experiment had two parts. In part one, there was three groups with three rats in each group. Let's call them group A, group B, and group C. She fed each group of rats food two weeks before conception. In group A, she fed the rats no soy products. In group B, she fed them soy flour. And in group C, she fed them genetically engineered soy flour. Then came part two of the experiment. This time, there were just two groups of three rats. Let's call them group D and group E. In group D, she fed the rats food with no soy products. In group E, she fed them genetically engineered soy flour. So in total, group A and group D ate no soy products, and those rats gave birth to 44 babies. Group B ate regular soy flour, and those rats gave birth to 33 babies. Group C and group E ate genetically engineered soy flour, and those rats gave birth to 45 babies. Well, that sounds normal. Well, three weeks later, the results were a little shocking. In the group with no soy at all, three baby rats died. In the groups with regular soy, three baby rats died. But in the groups who ate genetically engineered soy flour, 25 baby rats died. According to Dr. Ermakova, the reason why this is a problem is because the biochemical structure of rats is very similar to the biochemical structure of humans. So what are some of the other effects? Unfortunately, animals were tested during the process of these studies. Sorry, PETA. And also remember that these animals were given genetically modified food for every meal. The studies done on other animals resulted in precancerous cell growth, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, damaged immune systems, liver malfunctions, lesions in the liver, stomach, and kidneys, 
inflammation of certain organs, cell malfunctions, higher blood sugar levels, fertility problems, and unexplained increases in death rate. What are the effects on the environment? What about Mother Earth? Well, if we're not careful, natural seeds may end up on the endangered species list next. Scientists are frantically trying to save natural seeds because when crops grow, their pollen spreads everywhere. And when genetically engineered crops grow, their pollen infects all the surrounding natural plants. Once they mix, there's no turning back. An example of this cross-pollination is the superweed. What is the superweed? Remember when we talked about the plants that were genetically modified to resist herbicides? Well, guess what else is now resistant to herbicides? All of the surrounding natural weeds because of the contamination. But it doesn't stop there. It affects every species in the animal kingdom. Ever heard of the butterfly effect? Well, in Cornell University, scientists did a study, and they found that the Bt toxin that's released from genetically engineered crops is lethal to monarch butterflies. And that's just one study on one species. Fish and marine life are also in danger because of the accidental release of genetically engineered fish into the wild. So you're probably wondering, just like we were, how did this slip by our government regulatory bodies? And is there anything that we can do?